and I'm just going to spend a few minutes telling you about Lively. Um, and, uh, and hopefully, timing-wise, I think we can squeeze it in is just demo the product a little bit um, very, very quickly. So we started with what we felt were some just basic needs and wants that we saw in this marketplace. So we actually started from a place of going and looking at the space, in particular, of those in the aging population who want to remain living on their own and living in their own home. And that's where we started. And one of the things that we saw is that over the last 30 years or so, you've had this big shift from people, the average age of someone going into a nursing home or facilitated care went from about 74 to 90. And to us, that was a really interesting movement and one that we wanted to continue to figure out how could we support? How can we make that continue to be so? And how can we make, I mean, actually, Stephanie set it up for me perfectly when she talked about her thoughts about her mom. I mean, that is literally what we are trying to solve for. As all of us um, get older and we start to care for our parents, how can we have peace of mind about how they're doing, but also how can they remain in their homes as long as possible without being too intrusive, without designing products that nobody would want in their home or nobody would want to wear around their neck and so forth. And I'll talk on, about that in a moment. The other thing we saw was it's not all about monitoring or it's not all about just checking in. It's really also about connection. And how can we build a, an experience that is as much about connection as it is about sharing my daily patterns as someone who lives alone? And so with that, we developed Lively. It's, it's actually over here, and Lively consists of uh, a hub that you plug into the wall at home. There's actually no power switches. There's literally one place to put the plug. There are lights. Uh, actually, I have one plugged in over here. There are two lights. One says it's on, and the other tells you that you have connectivity. The connectivity is cellular. So one of the other things that we learned, and we saw actually a lot of companies are building things that connect with Wi-Fi. Well, the problem with connecting with Wi-Fi for a lot of users and consumers in this space is that they either don't have internet in their home. Uh, still today, about if you're 70 or older, about 50% of those people do not have internet in their home. The other thing we found in our research is that if they do, some of those populations, the idea of pairing something to a Wi-Fi hub and or is their Wi-Fi even working all the time, made it a real showstopper. So this is cellular based. You plug it in and you have connectivity. And then there are these passive sensors, um, and I'll show you a picture here. There are these passive sensors, and you can see one's on the refrigerator, one's on a pillbox, there's one on a keychain. And the whole idea is nothing to wear, no video monitors, nothing that's too intrusive, but rather things that are in the home on inanimate objects. So the refrigerator, all we're doing is seeing when you open and close a refrigerator, or if you lift up your pillbox to take medication. So what we're trying to do is get people to change their behavior when they call their loved one, and basically, and these are the exact words we heard when we did a, a trial in Florida, basically not have pestering phone calls, not have nagging phone calls that are basically going like, mom, did you take your medication today? Did you eat? Did you get out of the house? But rather, if you had the ability, and I'm gonna show this, um, this now, if you can switch to the uh, iPhone. What if you had the ability, once you have that, Set up if you have a very, very simple dashboard. So we talked about Fitbit earlier and quantified self. We actually call this qualified self. So for this demographic, we believe, and, and this is just from talking to people, that it's really about the qualified aspect of this versus getting into all the data. And so you can see here, this is, this is a live app connected to, to this hub here. And you can see here in three of the categories, everything's good. And I don't even actually have to go beyond that. So when I call my father, let's say, and to check in on him, I'm not going to nag him about medication. I'm not going to nag him about food and drink. But I might check with him and say, hey, by the way, Dad, did you get out and walk the dog today? Or have you been active lately? And we might get into a conversation that talks about that he's not feeling so well. And that's why this is in particular red. Now, you can get into some of the data. So if I tap here, you can see I moved this before we started the, the session today. So you can see at 611 on the bottom right corner that this pillbox, which is over here, I picked it up, and so it would register movement. And that's the simplicity of what we're trying to do with, uh, with Lively and one aspect of it. The second aspect, actually, if you can switch back. Once this comes up, one, a couple other things that, are, that we really focused on. One is ease of use. This has to be crazy easy to set up. So I mentioned there's no power switches. There's actually no power switches on these sensors either. And there's no pairing. Like, how many in this room have tried to pair a Bluetooth headset to your phone? you get like a 50-50 shot at best that it works, right? So these have no pairing. So literally, this little video is kind of showing you the installation truly is 
you peel off the sticker and you put it on the location in the home that you want to have activity sharing about. And so in our, in our tests in Florida, this, we confirmed this. It literally took five minutes to set up. Once you've set it up and, at, and, uh, and set up your account, there's no internet or computer required for the person living on their own. And then whoever wants to, and whoever that consumer, that person living on their own gives access to, can see the dashboard that I showed you earlier. Now, we didn't feel that that covered the whole problem that we were trying to solve for. And that is this whole idea of how do you make this more of a two-way conversation? How do you make this about connection? Not only I'm sharing as an elder that I'm doing OK with my loved ones, but also I'd love th something in return. And so we actually created something called LivelyGram. And this is part of the entire service. And oftentimes people say, oh, is this two products? And we really believe that these are very, very linked. And actually, this is a missing piece that a lot of companies aren't thinking about, which is they're just focused on the hardware component. They're just focused on the, the, the activity sharing one way versus two way. So really quickly, what LivelyGram is, is it's a bi-weekly mailer, comes in the US mail. When, let's say, my father set this up in his home, he would invite family members, his children, grandchildren, friends, whoever, to contribute to LivelyGram. And then they simply, I can't get into all the details just from a time standpoint, but very, very easy ways to share um, share your photos or messages, and if you can switch to the iPhone. And the way you do it is you actually just take pictures or you upload pictures just like you would uh, if you're sharing on your own social network. So here if, you say, if I tap upload picture, yeah, I can take a photo, that's great. But more important, I can actually grab photos I've ever already taken or I can actually grab photos that I already posted in places that I'm posting, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. So if you think about this, this is for the children, grandchildren, sometimes great-grandchildren, to contribute to grandma, great-grandma, whoever it might be. All I do is upload that photo, and then when we go to print this the next time, we do the rest. There's no curation. There's no need to have one family member put this all together and get it ready for printing. We take care of the rest, and it shows up in the mail. And those two experiences, and if you can go back, really sum up what we're trying to do with Lively. Really quickly, this is two slides where we just wanted to summarize why we think what we're doing is different and actually addresses some of the things that I think that Stephanie was talking about. So why is it different? Well, what we saw kind of before today is very high cost. So you look at products in this space, generally it's $750, sometimes thousands of dollars of hardware that you have to buy. And then pretty expensive monthly fees, very complex setup, so oftentimes you'll go to websites of these companies and they'll say, call us now. They don't even have online ordering because they need to call you to set up installation. And we wanted to avoid that. Um, clunky, I think Katie and Stephanie mentioned this. Like, we, this was kind of baffling to us that there are so many companies in this space that we've seen in the past that just don't think about design. And we really believe that no matter how young or how old you are, great design is great design. And it's something that we all have emotional reaction to. And so we really focused on building something that we felt someone would be happy or proud of having in their home. Um, and then monitoring and reactive. So we felt like this whole idea of video cameras in the home made it much more about monitoring and much more about reactive versus proactive two-way connection. So lively in terms of affordability, we set out very early on to make this truly a consumer product from the experience to the price point, et cetera. So it's $149 to buy the hardware, so that's six sensors and a hub. And then it's $19.95 a month, and that includes your connection, because you have that cellular connectivity, and it includes LivelyGram every two months, and, or every two weeks, excuse me. When we looked at the space, nobody, nobody is thinking about pricing this in a way that when Stephanie talked about that predicament she's thinking about in the future for her mom, at this price point, what we found in our research and when we tested it, it's a no-brainer. Literally, uh, sandwich parents, as many people will know that term in, in the audience, felt like this was, I would try this. This, is, this would be worth trying. Then what we also learned is because it's very simple, because we really focus from a human-centric design standpoint, which is cool that we're at IDEO when I say that, because that's their whole thing, um, we found that even the people who had this in their homes felt like we were stri striking the right balance between sharing some activity but not being too intrusive. And so we are uh, launching and shipping in 10 weeks. We kind of did a pre-launch earlier this year, but these, these products, this is the packaging, and these are the uh, units that were starting to come from our manufacturing partner, and we'll be uh, shipping it in about 10 weeks. And I think that's it.
So we actually don't yet know, and this actually, I would speak to Stephanie's slide or, or mention about you can put it together any model you want and you really have to put it out to consumers and see what you learn. I learned that in my experience over the years at different companies. Um, but we believe it's about anywhere from probably about three to four year lifetime. But we're gonna see, we're gonna see a variance. I think in some cases, uh, in some, some examples that we saw in Florida in particular, people who are actually younger in age were interested in this, and then I think the lifetime value is quite, quite a bit longer. I think in other cases, we believe and we hope that Lively provides a way for someone who might be ready for more intensive care, but not quite, that we can prolong that moment when they are living independently, but then Lively serves as a way to be a signal. We do not think we, we're not a medical device, we're not a per personal emergency response device, but hopefully we can be something that signals that maybe that's time for those types of either devices or services. Just a quick um, one. One of the things we love about your branding and the orange, which we think is a great color. Um, I saw your color. <laughs> is, the, is the, the positive imagery that you're trying to associate. How do you get past this negative connotation about monitoring that a lot of entrepreneurs are facing when it comes to, I don't want to be monitored and I don't want to have gadgets and widgets monitoring me in my ho home. How do you sort of think about that from a marketing perspective? Yeah, it's a great question. And I would say, um, and a lot of my colleagues are here today. I think it's probably, in addition to making sure the hardware gets built and everything, it's the thing we think about pretty much every day. Um, and I think there's, there's a lot of different dimensions to it. I think two core things that, that come into mind. One is we have gotten a tremendous amount of feedback about the positivity of kind of the website, the feeling of this, even the name we thought a lot about. Like, why do things have to be negative and starting from a negative point? And I think that will go a long way to, uh, to helping us build the brand. I think the other piece is we're all benefiting a little bit from the internet of things or the connected device or connected self or whatever the, the phrases are because what we've also been learning is that even if a, your 85-year-old mother doesn't wear a Fitbit, they're actually starting to become part of the vernacular. Like they're on the Today Show. I, I, Little things like this matter, right? Like they're on the Today Show, they're in the major newspapers, they're on local television. So even if they're not using it, we're starting to see that people are getting a little bit more used to that idea. And then if you, as long, I would say, as long as you don't make products that look like this and that are garage door openers around your neck, you have a shot at building what, at least what we think, are much more beautiful products that are in the range of a Fitbit or others. And, and you know, it was really interesting in, in our trials, people, the number one adjective that they used to describe the experience was fun. Th these are the elders that are living in their home independently that we put these things in their home. And about a third of them said, well, if we're going to do this, we should put the custom one. There's one you can put anywhere you want. We should put the custom one in the bathroom because that's really good information. <laughs> and we didn't want to go there because we didn't want to be too, too forceful about that. Um, I... Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank um, you. Great question. So um, in terms of how it talks to the refrigerator and to the other sensors, you have this hub that's plugged into the home, and then each of these sensors have um, Bluetooth LE. It's called a, a low-power version of Bluetooth. And so it actually talks wire wirelessly. And then what we're measuring is just when these things move, that indicates that there's activity. So when you, you saw that little video that put it on the refrigerator, when that refrigerator door opens and closes, we count that as a, a session, if you will, in the refrigerator. And we have... Um, a fair amount of algorithms to make sure that not every single movement counts as like 50 movements, but we're taking little chunks of time. The target, cust target customer is a great question. Uh, so what we think about every day is that the actual person we're talking to and our target, um, target audience member, if you will, is actually the person who lives independently, the elder who lives independently. And we learn this through being out in the market a bit and just trying different messaging. Because what we learned is that the adult child is actually sold for the most part. They get it, they want to use it, but what we need to do is actually make sure that we're doing something that someone who would, would want this in their home or would be willing to try it in their home. The purchaser is most likely the adult child. So that's why it's on, in online instead of Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, it's, uh, we will start online, we'll launch it online, and we're also looking at and already starting conversations about some interesting retail channels. You can probably guess some of the ones that would make sense. Um, everywhere from Apple Store to um, potentially pharmacies, some of the chain pharmacies. Um, and then we actually think there's a really interesting opportunity, and we've been talking to maybe some represented here, 
home health care agencies or organizations um, that are providing in-home health care? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And um, one, of the, the very, one of the very first things we did, uh, this was last summer, before we even built anything, before we even started designing with an industrial designer the, the hardware, is we actually did focus groups here in the Bay Area with um, different communities. And we kind of targeted both adult children and as well we targeted um, elders who were living independently. And a couple of the organizations that we worked with were uh, home health care organizations. And so um, people who were going into homes and, and actually uh, helping their clients and their, um, their consumers. And in that case, what we actually found, we ended up doing a focus group with those professionals. And what they found is that app that I showed you could be very valuable if I'm working with, let's say, three or four people and I'm going between homes with those people, I could glance at that dashboard and before I walk in the door, I could know that I should probably talk to them about medication, but I actually don't need to nag them. It's the same thing as my nagging analogy with the phone call from a loved one. In this case, it's an in-person nagging from a um, healthcare professional or an in-home care, an in -home care provider. So we think it's absolutely great. Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> um, but a little bit expanded. I mean, I think one of the things that we believe is once you have a, a hub in the home, it can become something that we could create additional sensors. So a lot of times what people will ask is, well, what about a uh, glucose monitoring device or something for a more chronic um, illness or condition? And we do think there could be an opportunity there down the road. But I, again, in the true fashion of, of any good startup, like we're super focused on this right now, but we think that could be a potential down the road. The other thing that we want to do is make this an open platform so that it's why we built this on open standards so that if there are others out there who have interesting um, ways of helping someone who's living independently share their activity patterns, then they ought to be able to do that through this, through this system as well. So we, uh, we hope to get there one day. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Thank you.